Okay, uh, can everyone should be muted, but can everyone hear me? I want to see like some head nods. I'm seeing some some thumbs up. Great. Okay. Sorry that we're starting a little late, everybody. Um, as we're in an increasingly digital time, uh, naturally that what comes with that is uh, technology concerns and issues. So I was dealing with that. But with um, why don't we begin to get started? Sorry, that was the live stream. If you heard that echoing, that was live stream in the background. Um, so, great. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. I am thrilled to see so many of your faces. Um, and I'm sorry that we aren't seeing each other in person. Um, so with that, so my name is Liz Moran. I am NYPIRG's Environmental Policy Director uh, based in our Albany office, although currently from my home in Troy, New York. Um, and yeah, we're joined together today because we're about to mark the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, which is absolutely huge. Um, we have come a very long way. I'm sure many of you have learned about in school um, how before we had Earth Day, before we had things like the Clean Air Act and the Clean Water Act, um, this country literally had waterways that were able to be set on fire um, and that we've come a long way but we have so much work to do and the crisis that we're currently in uh the covid19 or coronavirus public health crisis that we're facing really has brought to light just how much work we have to do um and it's so unfortunate that we're facing the 50th anniversary of earth day in this incredibly dire moment. Um, ordinarily, we may have been gathered together in person. Maybe many of us would have been conducting community cleanups. Um, so in many ways, this anniversary is um, a sad one. And not only that, the coronavirus crisis is highlighting systemic issues uh, that we have in our society. Um, for example, uh, people have been uh, lauding the cleaner environments that they're seeing in their communities with folks stuck in their homes. Uh, there was a viral post um, of the canalways in Venice being clean. Um, air quality has been cleaner in places like China um, and even in Los Angeles. Um, so these are things that are being celebrated. And at the same time, those of us who are in areas that aren't so dense um, are seeking ways to get outdoors more. It's really the only place that people are feeling safe and where we can socially distance far enough. Um, so this isn't the fault of individuals. This is really the fault of a systemic crisis where our governments have failed to properly act on climate change, have failed to end our reliance on single-use plastics, have failed to properly regulate polluters and protect our waterways. Um, and while this is all going on, because we've had a legacy issue of environmental pollution, of air pollution, there are communities that are far more susceptible to coronavirus because of what we've already done, because of what polluters, because of what the oil and gas industry has already done. Um, um, for example, we have a number of communities, primarily minority majority communities, who are in what we dub environmental justice communities, who have poor air quality, and poor air quality has been linked to being a vulnerable factor for COVID-19. Um, these are the same communities that often are working the jobs that are deemed essential. So these people are dealing with multiple factors from their environment to their workplace that's putting them at increased risk of coronavirus. Um, and while this is all going on, um, our federal government has continued to drop the ball. Um, while this is going on, you would think we really need to enforce environmental protections and make sure that we're doing everything we can to protect public health, but that unfortunately is not what's happening. Um, instead, we've been dealing with uh, 
a series of regulatory rollbacks uh, for the entirety of this administration. Um, and as the COVID crisis is going on, um, there has been a blanket policy where EPA is stating that they will not be enforcing critical environmental laws and protections. Um, so all of that's really grim um, and that's leaving a lot to the states. And thankfully here in New York, we have shown tremendous leadership. That doesn't mean that there isn't a lot more to do, but thanks to all of you guys here who I'm enjoying getting to see, uh, New York State has shown tremendous leadership. For example, the budget that was just passed in the midst of this crisis, we got a fracking ban in statute. We got a polystyrene ban. We increased funding for our Clean Water Infrastructure Act. Uh, and that's just a few to build on major victories we had last year. Last year, we passed one of the most ambitious climate laws in the country. We placed a ban on single use plastic bags. So we're heading in the right direction, but that doesn't mean the work can stop there. We're still in the midst of a major climate crisis. We are still in the midst of a major plastic pollution crisis. 8 million metric tons of plastic waste enters our oceans every single year. So we have a lot more to do. And one of the ways that we may end up tackling some of these issues in New York is through a new Environmental Bond Act. Uh, one of the major pieces that was passed in this year's budget is a $3 billion Environmental Bond Act called the Restore Mother Nature Bond Act. This is designed to both protect our environment from the consequences of climate change and to actively fight climate change. So this is critically needed funding to protect our air, water, and natural resources. But the ones who should be paying for this are the polluters. Absolutely, hands down, the oil and gas industry that has put us in this crisis, that has spent billions of dollars deceiving the public, billions of dollars swaying uh, our elected officials from taking action on climate change. They should be the ones to pay, not get bailouts, not only is our federal government not enforcing environmental protections right now and having this massive uh, giveaway to polluters in the midst of this crisis, uh, they also are proposing a massive bailout of the oil and gas industry. We can't have that. So here in New York, we have a major climate law that we have to meet. And one way we can help with those efforts and also fund our things like our Environmental Bond Act is by ending our fossil fuel subsidies. Uh, so with that, um, I am thrilled that we are joined with a major environmental mogul, um, uh, Senator Liz Kruger, who also chairs our finance committee. She sponsors legislation that would end fossil fuel subsidies in New York State. And just to continue to tout Senator Kruger, she's been an environmental champion for years, um, be long before we ended up getting this major legislation passed in the past couple of years. She carried legislation to ban polystyrene in New York. Um, she was a leader on the fracking movement before it had really caught on. So I'm so thrilled that we get to be joined by someone like Senator Liz Kruger today. So I'm gonna unmute the Senator and turn it over to her as our keynote speaker. Hi, Liz. Hi, everyone. Boy, getting called an environmental mogul was, I was thinking who was on this call that I didn't know about that I would be competing with. So thank you for the lovely introduction. Um, and good evening to everyone. And we're all getting used to, this is how we do group meetings. This is how we do every meeting. Oh, an adorable baby there right in the middle of the screen. Hi, Megan and whoever your baby is. <laughs> We should all bring our babies to, if you know, I don't have one, I'll take one um, to, to any kind of meetings. And that's appropriate because when we're talking about environmentalism, when we're talking about the fight in front of us, we're talking about them. We're talking about whether there's an earth left for them to grow up on and hopefully not have to stay somehow hermetically seal, sealed in bubbles inside apartments to lead their lives. Wouldn't that be a true, true travesty. Um, 
But right now we're all coming from those places. And despite my beautiful beach scene in the back, it's fake. I'm here on Manhattan Island. I just like changing up the background a few times a day for variety. Um, and Liz, Liz already meant the other Liz, Liz Moran already mentioned that we actually had a pretty good year on environmental issues in Albany in the context of the budget this year. We had a great year in last year uh, in terms of environmental legislation. And to be quite blunt, we're probably mostly on hold right now for moving forward with envir more environmental legislation, which we need. Um, but both houses of the legislature, while we believe we have the authority to do bills in absentia, it is more complicated and everyone is being driven by the most urgent um, crises they're seeing in their communities, which are all directly tied into the pandemic and the world economic collapse that seems to be uh, matching it for crisis competition. Of course, I and many of you, I'm sure, believe that this pandemic is at least partially correlated to the damage we have done to our climate and the changes we are seeing literally every day um, in both patterns of invasive species, patterns of weather that move um, illnesses around the globe in unexpected ways in morphing of species and morphing of viruses um, in relationship to what's going on out there. And I don't know that any of us necessarily can draw straight lines between environmental damage and harm and patterns of illness, but I have no, no doubt in my mind that they do all correlate, which means when we're thinking about the current health pandemic and what we need to do sooner, faster, better for the environment, we need to put into context that this is likely not the last new explosion of a different kind of disease we are gonna see. And we all need to learn to be much, much better prepared for the next one, because I fear there will be a next one. Um, again, Liz talked about, we passed the state styrofoam ban. Oh my God, I put that bill in, I think 11 years ago. Um, and again, just for government agencies, just to start it out. And then New York City picked up on it. Actually, school children in New York City picked up on it as a major sort of theme that we could get styrofoam out of the school cafeterias. And it blossomed from there. So another important lesson for us all is often the generations below us who can pick up the mantle and move more rapidly and efficiently than we can. So I want to thank to be quite honest, school children, elementary school children from a decade ago who started the anti-styrofoam, at least for food products, um, messaging. And it, New York State's slow, so it takes us longer, but we finally got there. We think we finally got there on plastic bags, although I just will call out there, there are those who are using this pandemic as an excuse to charge that reusable bags are more dangerous for the spread of the virus and they are urging reversal on the actions we took on plastic bags. I know everyone on this call knows this, but I will just say it out loud. Reusable non-plastic bags are of no greater danger to you or others than plastic bags and may be less dangerous so please, please, please don't fall into that or let others fall into that. Of course, it's always been true. If your reusable bag gets dirty, wash it out. That was true pre-pandemic and post-pandemic, but it has nothing to do with the virus. Um, so, but we see the, the plastics industry continually messaging that in a variety of ways. So we have to be very, very aware and careful that we don't get pushed backwards. Oh, look, more attractive children joining this. Um, oh, great. More people are bringing their kids on. Excellent. Um, 
So we have to be very aware that they're trying to push us back. We also have to be very aware, and I think Liz talked about it, the White House controlled by someone who should not be president and I don't accept as president, um, continues every day to try to reverse longstanding accepted environmental laws, standards, regulations, policies. It's sort of breathtaking that he's not seemingly spending any of his day on doing what needs to be done around this country for the pandemic, but every day he has some time left to sign off on ending environmental policies or laws. And that's terrifying because like the rest of his administration, it's he does crazy things over here and you shouldn't notice what's really going on over there, which if you did notice would think you would think, oh my God, that's even worse than anything we're learning about. So we have to be really broad thinking in our assignments right now to stay on top of large numbers of things, do whatever we can to expose um, and inform the public of what's going on. I think the plus and minuses of the challenges of this world of now we not only use the internet for everything, we actually seem to sort of live on the internet, um, how we can communicate the right information, vetted, correct scientific information to people in ways that we get through the noise of so many other things going on, um, including, and I understand this also, many people's desire to just turn off, listen to music and movies and not deal with reality because reality isn't so much fun right now. Um, but we need to keep going and keep educating them. I think I am want, I'm supposed to talk to you about my divestment bill um, which is legislation to require the state controller remove investments in fossil fuel companies from our, our pension fund investments. The New York State controller is technically one of the largest individual investors in the world because it's a sole decision-making process for where New York State's mm, 220 billion of pension money is. I'm guessing that number because it moves around and, the, and Wall Street hasn't been doing so great lately. So it may be a lower number, but it's enormous amount of money, um, hundreds of billions of dollars that are controlled by Tom DiNapoli, a friend of mine. Um, and he uses a complex investment strategy to try to get the best returns for the pension monies. And that's his job and his responsibility and critically important. Um, but where we disagree is he doesn't believe he should divest completely from fossil fuel investments um, because they have, they're part of the portfolio of returns. And I believe that it is now more than scientifically and economically proven that these investments actually lose money compared to other investments he could make um, in sustainable and green energy efforts. And that also these investments are destined to simply become less and less valuable day by day, week by week, month by month, because pretty much the entire world knows we need to get off fossil fuels. Um, we have passed variations of laws of how long it will be before we no longer use fossil fuels. And so in economic Wall Street lingo, investments in fossil fuel companies are destined to be what's called stranded assets. No one is going to want them because there is no future in those businesses. Hence our investments, even if they still have some return on the dollar, um, are ultimately destined to not have any value. And we are seeing countries around the world, cities, states, major corporations, major universities, and financial institutions all divesting from the largest fossil fuel companies. That is what my bill mandates the controller do, giving him all kinds of options to make sure he's not taking a loss on the sale, he's not doing anything too quickly, even giving him the option to say, 
no, I don't define that company as falling into a big fossil fuel company because I see on the horizon, they're actually going to be shifting 60% of their investments to non-fossil fuels. And they're going to be in the wind energy business. And we're excited about that. And we want to keep our money there. So we give him those kinds of options. We, of course, give him the option, pull out of fossil fuel companies. If they decide not to be fossil fuel companies anymore and to go into a less environmentally dangerous line of work, uh, then we can reinvest in whatever they're doing next. So I'm very proud of the bill. Justin Flagg, who's also on this um, Zoom with me a couple of boxes south, is my environmental policy person. Has worked extraordinarily hard on writing this bill with me, ensuring it meets constitutional um, vetting, um, working with the controller's office, hearing what their concerns were and adjusting for them. And yet we still don't have the controller support. We do have 33 senators that have signed out as co-sponsors, 50 assembly members who have signed out as co-sponsors. Um, we have enough to pass it in the Senate we probably need, we need 76 to pass it in the assembly. So we're urging everyone to push the assembly to get more signatures as co-sponsors of the bill to show their leadership. This is a bill with legs, as they say, to try to get this through both. But I will also tell you every time people like you push the envelope, urging Tom DiNapoli to do more and better on his investments, to get out of fossil fuels, to divest, to invest instead of green energy. Every time anyone makes any noise, the controller's office seems to want to go farther towards where we want him to go. He doesn't want to come out and say he supports this bill. He doesn't want to acknowledge that the legislature should ever have the ability to mandate what he does. And I sort of get that big picture, um, but we need him to do this. So I continue to assure him, if he wants to do this voluntarily, I will be his biggest supporter and I will immediately say, okay, no, we don't need the bill because we already took care of this, but it hasn't been taken care of yet. And so there's a need to both push on getting more legislators to support the bill and get getting Tom DiNapoli to continue to use every tool in his belt, tool belt, to remove New York State pension funds from fossil fuel companies. Can I stop there, Liz? What do you think? Yeah, you did great. Thank you so <laughs> much for being with us. Sure, um, I mean, I can take questions if you want, or I can answer your questions for a little more, whatever you like. <laughs> <laughs> what I'll do is um, I'm going to give everyone my email address. So folks have, because we have over a hundred participants. And yeah, that would be hard to take questions. Yeah. Yes. So I'm going to give everyone my email address. If they have questions for you, I'll make sure you get them. Um, but thank you so much for speaking with us um, and sharing with us the importance of continuing to push on this issue. So thank you. Well, thank you very much. And again, you may not be able to find me that easily, but Justin Flagg in my office is much more accessible. Um, yes, he also isn't working from our office anymore. We all work from our homes. Um, and he also has an adorable child who's not on his lap. But, <laughs> um, you know, we all are figuring out how you multitask from your home and your computer um, trying to get everything done. So I really appreciate all of you being online with us tonight. Thank you. And I'm going to sneak off if that's okay, Liz. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you again, Senator. Thank you. All righty. So you guys heard it from the Senator. It really takes our voices to make a huge difference here. So not only do we need to make sure New York State ends fossil fuel subsidies, there's so much more that we need to be doing to protect our water quality, to stop our reliance on single-use plastics. Um, so as part of NYPIRG's Earth Day 50 platform, we are urging the legislature to pass the legislation the Senator talked about and end fossil fuel subsidies in New York State. 
We want uh, New York State to address dangerous fracking waste. We already uh, banned fracking, so now we have to make sure that we don't take dangerous fracking waste from other states into our state. Um, we need to make sure that we proactively test water quality and make sure dangerous chemicals don't enter our water. And we need to address more single use plastics. We need to make sure that, for example, straws aren't just available uh, for anyone to take. A simple step to reduce straws in New York State would just be an upon request law where you have, simply have to ask for a straw. Uh, so those are some of the things that we are going to be pushing for uh, this year and we need your help to do it. So with that being said, uh, we're gonna talk to you guys about some ways to do that. And I'm going to turn that over to uh, my friend and colleague, Eric Wood. So I'm gonna unmute Eric and here we go. Hey everybody, can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Uh, so welcome and thank you all for joining us tonight and a special shout out to, to Liz for working hard to make this happen and also to Senator Kruger's office for, for helping with this as well. It's great to, to hear from you both tonight. Um, as Liz has mentioned, much work needs to be done to fight climate change and protect New York's consequences. And the $3 billion Environmental Bond Act, which will go to voters in November, is a needed investment towards New York's climate goals. But polluters need to pay for this rather than taxpayers. And the uh, Senator had mentioned uh, Bill S.2649-B or Assembly Bill 257-B, which would end fossil fuel subsidies in New York State. Uh, so what we can do tomorrow when uh, the, the governor's people start picking up and listening to the voicemails, they need to hear our voice on this issue. So we're going to take a minute right now and we can all call the governor's office. All right, so we'll all do this together so that they get 100 calls in the morning on this one issue. It's going to start to resonate with them. So what I'm going to do is post the phone number and the script in the chat right now. And everybody pick up your phones and we'll make this call together. Where's that? Uh, let me get the chat here. Everyone face. All right. Does everybody see the script there? All right. So let's take a minute, pick up our telephones. And you're going to want to hit two and then hit one. If they hang up on you, call back and do it again. Hi, my name is Eric Wood and I live in New Paltz, New York, 12561. I'm calling to thank the governor for including the $3 billion Restore Mother Nature Bond Act in the state budget. Uh, but we need to make sure that corporate polluters are the ones responsible for creating the, uh, um, for paying for it and not us taxpayers. Uh, one way to do this is by ending New York's fossil fuel subsidies. Thank you. And then after you've called, uh, if you just want to put on the side, like I saw Kira do here, uh, just put called, and then we can tally how many calls that we got in tonight. Uh, so just go ahead and put it there. Great. Thank you so much. See, a lot of people are calling. Uh, this is uh, one of the most effective tools we have, especially now uh, with the virtual organizing, uh, but even with the ban on fracking in New York State, uh, it was because the governor's phone never stopped ringing. That really helped, uh, you know, pad that win. So thank you for everybody participating in this part of the action. Uh, as other people are finishing up their calls, I want to move on to our next action. If you are on social media, uh, you can use your Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I emailed all of you uh, sample tweets, sample Instagram posts, and graphics when I gave you the registration and confirmation for the event tonight. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is give you sample text, which you can attach to your Twitter or Instagram, um, and I will post that now. So just give me one second.
All right, so I just posted some sample Instagram and uh, a tweet on the side here. So you can use your own graphics, use the graphics we sent you, but if you can go onto your social media now, tag the people who are mentioned in the posts here, but also your local Senate representatives, your local assembly members. Uh, but you know, if you know their Twitter handles, they have one, most of them do, but not all of them. And then again, uh, if you can do this now or commit to doing it tonight or tomorrow morning for Earth Day, you know, just let us know again on the side here. All right, and then the last thing I want to mention, um, you know, not, it doesn't fall into the make polluters pay category necessarily, uh, but it is holding the fossil fuel industry accountable. There is a proposed power plant for uh, in Newburgh, New York, the Dan Scammer power plant, which would probably be the last fossil fuel power plant to be permitted in New York State, which means it would be the last one up and running. We still are at a point right now uh, to where they're in their approvals process with the Public Service Commission. Um, and we've been going back and forth with Dan Scammer and we have a chance of winning this fight here, but we need to keep the public pressure on. Uh, so what I wanna ask you all to do tonight uh, is uh, you can do this while we hear from our, our next speaker, performer. Uh, if you can do it while you're online with us, that's great. Let's get these messages in so the PSC sees them when they get to work in the morning but I'm gonna post the link to the Public Service Commission's website with a sample comment. Even if you've already commented on this particular fossil fuel project, you can do it again with this new language. Feel free to copy and paste it or come up with your own language surrounding it. Uh, so just give me one second so I can transfer that over here. Uh, so we have the PSC comment, the website, sample comment. All right. Okay, it's going in the chat right now. There we go. Yeah, so again, you can copy and paste this comment. You know, it's like the influence, the number of people that are paying attention to this, that's really gonna hit home with uh, Kathleen Burgess and the Public Service Commission. Um, so, you know, this is a, a new issue surrounding it, um, but, you know, very severe at that. Uh, so that's three things we can do tonight, tomorrow morning for Earth Day, uh, but let's show the fossil fuel industry and our representatives that we're not ignoring the climate crisis uh, in the midst of all the other crises going on. Um, and then the last thing we want to do here, uh, which I think hopefully most of you got the message in the email today, is hold up our signs so that we can do uh, a photo and be able to use that for social media uh, and other things later. So if you made your make, pollu pay, bleh, make polluters pay signs, uh, you can just hold them up here and uh, just hold them for like a couple of minutes, uh, maybe one or two minutes so that Liz can get some good uh, snapshots of us. That would be awesome. And if you don't have a sign, you just want to like give a thumbs up or something like that, that that'll work as well. Love everybody's signs. Nice job. Great. So Eric, right, do you yeah, have thank you anything else? Liz, thank you. Yeah, no, I'm really excited to hear from, from our next guest here tonight. So we can, uh, let's get, get over to that. Great. Thank you guys so much. And I also, before I transfer right over to Emily, I also want to give a shout out. We are currently live streaming this on YouTube as well. And I know we have a number of folks who are tuning in over there. So I just want to say hi to you guys tuning in on YouTube. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, please engage in the action. We'll be sure to post it in the description box later. Um, so folks watching on YouTube can also tune in. And with that said, I'm so excited to turn this over to our own Emily Asina, who is a fabulous 
performer and one of our own project coordinators. So thank you, Emily. I'm going to unmute you now. Cool. Hi, everyone. I'm Emily Yasina. Um, I am a musician. I'm also the project coordinator for Nightcore at Pratt. Um, and I do the issue coordination work for the Hunger and Homelessness campaign. Um, so I'm super stoked to play. I have four songs. Um, Happy Earth Day. I'm so proud to be a part of this organization and, and it's a huge honor to, to play for you guys.
Um, this next one is a cover by um, this band from Philly called uh, Yowler that I love. And the song's called Angel. Such a pretty thing with the love around the streets. It's
That was so great. Thank you so much, Emily. That was awesome. All right. So that is a wrap. Thank you guys so much. Um, it was so wonderful to get to see your faces here with us today. Uh, please keep fighting with us. We have so much work to do. I know that these times are really tough. Um, it's so easy to feel very isolated and down and helpless, um, but your voices still mean a lot. And we're so lucky to have an organization like this where we can band together and organize and make a huge difference. Um, so thank you, stay involved. If you have any questions, I had put it in the chat box, um, but I'll give you guys my email address if you need it. It's emoran, E-M-O-R-A-N, at nightperg.org. If you have questions about anything today, um, questions for the Senator, please feel free to reach out. Um, and I'm looking forward to working with you guys more. Let's make this 50th anniversary of Earth Day a great one. Thanks, guys.